Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to Quiz Time Ramadan Special, a truly unique show where for the very first time, you the, audience at, you the audience at home, along with the contestants here in the studio, get to take part in this live program using the official MTA app from wherever you are in the world. I'm your host for today's live show and we welcome you the sec on this second episode on this very special day of Yom Emesiyah Mode or the Promised Messiah Day. As before, to join into this quiz, simply download the MTAI app on your Android or iOS device from Google Play or the App Store, or use your phone's camera to scan the QR code on the screen, then tap the link to download the app. Once you've logged in, head to the events section and click on Quiz Time to watch the show live and interact with us. Quiz time consists of three rounds. In round one, get ready for a buzz around featuring fundamental Islamic questions. Round two will challenge your knowledge on the book Noah's Ark, written by the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. And in round three, the Khalifa's voice will delve into insights from Friday sermons delivered by Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ayyidahullah Ta'ala bin Nasrahil Aziz. For those of you following your, us on your mobile devices, your phone will automatically display the current question with multiple choice answers, all listed below the question. Simply select your desired answer as quickly as you can. As soon as the correct answer is revealed here in the studio, you'll get a notification on your app whether your answer is correct or not. Remember, this is all time dependent. So the faster you press your option, the better your score. Now let's quickly recap last week's episode. Sajid Zahid, Zahid from the UK's Mogami region emerged as our studio winner. Around 15,000 participants from around the world joined in and our international winner was Hamad Muin Ahmed, who will inshallah receive a very special copy of the Holy Quran. Congratulations to Hamad Sahib. Now remember every uh, copy of the Holy Quran is special, but this will in truly be a special surprise for Hamad Sab when he receives it. Remember that this show is your chance to participate from wherever you are in the world, and today's winner will also receive a similar special copy of the Holy Quran. So get ready to test your knowledge and compete. Let's meet our guests here in the studios today. Both of our contestants are here from uh, different parts of the United Kingdom. On my left-hand side, I have Fahim Nasir Sab. Uh, welcome to the uh, studio. How are you feeling? Great. Your yeah. very first time in a live event like this? Yes, yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Fantastic, mashallah. And you are from which region? A Middlesex region. So for those of us watching all around the world, where is Middlesex uh, compared It's to? on the west of London. Uh, it's about uh, 20 miles away from here. 20 miles away yeah. from here. And then on your left, we have with us Fawad Noonan Saab. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, tell us how you're feeling about today's program. I feel good. I feel good, yeah. And I hear that you have quite a lot of support at home. Um, uh, I told my mother about me being on this uh, show today and she went and told my whole family. So uh, presumably they might be watching me. And your so nanny's we're... tuned in as well. I then? think so. I think so. And you haven't got a placard <laughs> saying hello, mama. Or no, that's Islam. Okay. <laughs> Walaikum salam. So friends and family watching, cheer on your... We're doing shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Cheer on uh, whoever you wish to. Uh, we have Fah uh, uh, Fawad Saab and Fahim Saab both here. And uh, the support is going to be international for this uh, truly inter international event through the MTA international website um, and the app and on your screens. So, Fahim and Fawad Sab, welcome to Quiz Time and let's carry on with the program. Uh, we'll start up with the warm up question. We'll start up with the warm up question and to make everything easy, let's see uh, how everything is running and if it's running as expected. Contestants in the studio, you'll get ready and viewers at home, please load up your apps and get ready to participate. The warm up question for today is, what was the name of Muslim television Ahmadiyya or MTA before it started broadcasting 24 hours a day? You have four different options. You have Ahmadiyya Muslim Presentation, which is AMP. B, you have Muslim Television, Ahmadi, uh, Muslim Television. You have C, Ahmadiyya Television or ATV. And you have D, Muslim Television International, MTI. 
So all of you at home as well, please vote in and see um, which uh, answer you prefer. Let's uh, lock in the possible answers. Let's go for the studio answers, first of all. Let's reveal them on the screens. We have yourself. What have you voted for? I went with the uh, Muslim te television international. So okay, I feel like so I've seen it, but I feel like I'm wrong. Okay, <laughs> I'm so Muslim television international is uh, the selected answer uh, by Fahim Nasser Saab. Um, Fawad Noonan Saab, what have you answered? I, choose, uh, I chose AMP, Ahmadiyya Muslim Presentation. So Ahmadiyya Muslim Presentation is your answer. Let's have a look and see what the right answer is, which is, which is Ahmadiyya Muslim Presentation. So well done for WhatsApp. Let's have a look and see how many of you voted for the right answer at home. Only 7% got that actually. So it was a difficult question and um, uh, one which we didn't expect everyone to get correctly, but uh, well done to Fawad Saab, you've got that correct, 7% of the rest of them. And a large proportion of you actually, actually thought it was Muslim Television International. Uh, the app also allows us to take polls from you at home. We would like to find out how confident you're also feeling at home, especially following that question. On your apps, um, vote on the poll. Let's uh, see how you are feeling. How confident are you feeling today? A, very confident. B, quite confident. C, not very confident or D, not at all confident. Let's have a look and see. We have here a mixture. And it reveals that Fawad Noonan Saab is feeling very quite confident. And Fahim Nasser Saab, you're so confident that you're off the scale. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh... None of these felt right, so. <laughs> okay, right, so remember, you have to be confident yeah, to be yeah, yeah. standing here <laughs> and being here with us, okay. So Looking let's carry on with the show. <laughs> uh, Alhamdulillah, with everything working as expected, we are ready to start the quiz. Viewers, as we dive into this live broadcast, it's essential to keep in mind that the MTA app is reaching viewers worldwide. With such vast coverage, we may encounter occasional technical glitches. Should any arise, Rest assured that our dedicated technical team is diligently working behind the scenes to resolve them. We're optimistic that the show will proceed smoothly according to schedule, inshallah. Last week, we addressed an issue where some viewers were unable to view their final scores on the app. We've taken some steps to rectify this, aiming for a much smoother experience. In case you encounter any app-related difficulties, don't hesitate to reach out to us via our technical team on WhatsApp, which is 07375 355 494. The number will be appear on your screens. As an additional feature, we'll be displaying your messages on the screen, so remember to send us your comments and thoughts via our social media handles throughout the show. Now, a quick note for those watching online. For the best and most seamless viewing experience with minimal delay, we recommend accessing the show through the events section of the MTA app. For those looking to enjoy the show on their TV screens, you can easily cast your device using Google Chromecast or Apple AirPlay, ensuring the whole family can participate in the fun together. All right, with all preparations in place, let's dive straight into our first round, Ramadan Rush, let the game begin. Welcome to round one, where speed and memory take center stage. We're testing your knowledge from the Vakfinor syllabus parts two and three with eight multiple choice questions. Here's how it works. Once the question is asked, contestants in the studio get ready to hit those buzzers. You will then have 10 seconds to lock in your answers. If you're quick to on the draw and answer correctly within that time, you will earn the points. But remember, if you don't lock your answer within 10 seconds, no points for you. For those of you viewing at home, you will get the same 10 seconds window to select your answers after the buzzer is pressed. Each correct answer scores you a point. Let's go to question one. So question one is, when do we celebrate the promised Messiah Day? I hope none of you in the studio get this wrong. <laughs> is it A, 20th of February, B, 23rd of March? Okay, so you've buzzed uh, in already. You've got 10 seconds to uh, answer and you've got the same time to actually change your mind. Let's have a look and see of what you have 
selected? What have you selected? I selected the 23rd of March. So 23rd of uh, March, and let's have a look and see what uh, the other options were. The other options were 18th of May and the 30th of June. And let's see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is 23rd of March, Machala, well done. Let's have a look and see um, how everyone at home has also, uh, <laughs> and that's 98% uh, Machala. So 98% of you have uh, correctly joined us on today, which is also the Promised Messiah Day. Question two, let's have a look and see what this question is. What was the name of the angel that brought revelation to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. You have four possibilities. Is it A, Hazrat Israfil, B, Hazrat Mikail, C, Hazrat Jibrail, or D, well, you've answered again before the buzzer goes. Let's go. And you have a few more seconds if you would like to change your answer. Two seconds, one, and Fawad Sab. Uh, Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam. Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam is your answer. Let's see what D was. The option for D was Hazrat Israel. And let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. C is the correct answer. So well done for WhatsApp. And everyone at home, you, 99% of you, um, also managed to get the right answer. It was, in fact, Hazrat Jibreel who brought revelations to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You need to be faster. Let's go on to question three. During Ramadan, on which specific nights do Muslims seek Laylatul Qadr or the night of decree? Again, four possibilities. The even-numbered nights in the last ten, month, 10 days of Ramadan. The odd-numbered nights in the last 10 days of Ramadan. We've got another buzz in, in the studio. And seven seconds left. Uh, Fawad Noon and Sub's very fast on the buzzer today. Is your, is your buzzer working? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, feel, like, I feel like he, I he hit him before I did. So. Okay. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see. So, Fawad Noon and Sub, you have answered with which answer? Uh, the odd numbered nights in the last 10 days. The odd numbered nights, nights in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. In fact, it is correct. The other two options were the 25th of Ramadan and the 15th night of Ramadan as well. And in fact, 93% of you at home uh, chose the right answer, which is the odd numbered nights in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Let's go over to our expert, Talat Siam, for an in-depth understanding of this. In the narration in Bukhari, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu was very excited and he came out to let the Muslims know the exact time for the Laylatul Qadr. But when he came out, he found two Muslims arguing and fighting. In order to break them up, he was made to forget the exact time for the Laylatul Qadr. And then the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that you shall now find the Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Uh, so remember that you play by joining us through the uh, MTA app. Uh, that's the best way of playing, unless you've been selected to come into the studio and you can participate here. Um, I think your buzzer is working. Yep. You're just it's a bit it's slow, it's I think, yeah, on, I think, the, on I think pressing it. Needs it. A bit, it needs some firm hitting, so. Okay, <laughs> so some firm, but don't break it, please. No, We've got no, another two programs <laughs> to do in Ramadan. So, uh, Fawad Sab, ready for the next question? I, I, I like to think so. I think your dad must be very proud of you, just, um, just whacking it, yeah. whacking the yeah. Uh, just the martial arts side, you know. Oh, martial dad. arts, yeah, okay. yeah, so yeah. No, no slicing it into two. Yeah, pieces. yeah. Well, that, that's all he would do, I think. But, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's have a look at the next question. Next question is question four. What was the name of the father of Hazrat Yusuf or Joseph alayhi salam? Four possibilities. A, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, or lastly. Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. So the buzzing was again, first by Fawad Nunan Sahib. Um, you have a few more seconds if you want to change your answer, but you have selected which answer? Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam is your selected answer. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. Again, you've got that correct, mashallah, and Hazrat Yaqub is the correct answer, as uh, we can see. 76% of you got that correct. Um, with the next batch was 15% that um, mentioned Hazrat Yunus. Hazrat Yaqub had in fact 12 sons and Hazrat Yusuf was one of them. Let's move on to question five. What does the hadith, 
Hubbul Watan min al Iman translate into English? Is it A, brotherhood is the essence of faith? B, love of one's country? <laughs> I hope you get this right. Fasting is part of faith, or D, loyalty is part of faith. So our hopes are on you, Fahim Nasser Sub. Your time is up. What's the answer? It's B. Mashallah, let's have a look and see what the answer is. Please be right. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah, and what's the answer? Yes, he's got it right. So let's have a look and see. Uh, C and D were fasting is part of faith and loyalty is part of faith. 87% of you got love of one's country is a part of faith. So well done there. So uh, the correct answer, as you've mentioned, is love of one's country is a part of faith. It's a, a true reminder of us that each time we recite uh, the pledges, uh, we find that there, and we hope that we can fulfill that pledge whenever it is read. Question six, let's move on. What was the name of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam's twin sister? Four possibilities. Was it A, Jannat Bibi? Was it B, Hurmat Bibi? Was it C, Jirag Bibi? Or was it D, Qudsiya Bibi? So a few more seconds left, and we have Fawad Noonansab, who has selected an answer, which is? I would like to believe it is Hurmut Bibi, as far as my memory. Okay, goes. so you have selected Hurmut Bibi. Let's have a look at what the correct answer is. Unfortunately, you're wrong. The correct answer is, in fact, Jannat Bibi. Uh, to learn a little bit more about this, uh, actually, let's tell you how many people got that right. 41% of you got that right. Um, and let's have a little bit more knowledge about this from Abdul Halim Sahib, who's one of our resident experts here at MTA International. Did you know that the promised Messiah Islam, had a twin sister whose name was Jannat Bibi, who died at a very young age? This is because the promised Messiah Islam, was revealed by God Almighty that his name was also Adam. And it's only correct that if he has been named Adam, he should also have some similarities with Adam. So as Adam was born on a Friday, the promised Messiah Islam, was also born on a Friday. And as Adam was born as a twin, the promised Messiah Islam, was also born a twin. Moreover, a Muslim saint by the name of Hazrat Ibn Arbi also predicted that when the promised Messiah Islam, will be born, he will be born as a twin. This also proves the truthfulness of the promised Messiah Islam. So welcome back to the studios. We have uh, Fahim Nasser with both hands on the buzzer, very eager to uh, uh, answer correctly. Yes. Uh, and, not, uh, and we'll go straight to the next question. <laughs> Uh, the next question is, how many chapters are there in the Holy Quran? You have four possibilities. You have A, 112, B, 200, C, 120, or D, 100. <laughs> I didn't finish, but uh, let's have a look and see what Fawad Nunatab has uh, answered with. Uh, 140. Uh, one second, we'll give a, bit, a few more, a little bit more time. So what's your answer? Uh, 114. Okay, so 114 is your answer. I think your martial arts are coming in handy. Here <laughs> you seem to be... The rules are getting yeah, fasting you're fasting and yeah. he's fast, but he's got the martial arts uh, yeah. Yeah. upper hand. Okay, that's fine. So 114 is the right answer. 94% of you got that correct. Well done. So it is 114 um, chapters of the Holy Quran. And the Quran itself was revealed over a course of 23 years to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu through the angel Jibrail. Next question. In which year did the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, pass away? Was it A, 1907? Was it B, 1901? Was it C? I didn't say anything as yet. So let's have a look and see. It's come up on the screen. Um, and let's see what Fahim Nasser Sab wants to answer with. What's the answer? 1908. 1908 is your answer. So 1908 is the answer. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. Correct, well done, mashallah. The last uh, possibility was 1906, and 87% of you got 1908 correct. Well done, all of you at home. Next question.
Let's move on to the next question, please. Right, that's everything asked in the first round. Let's have a see how everyone has uh, scored both in the studio and at home as well. Um, let's have a look at the scores in the studio. We have on my left-hand side, uh, Fahim Nasasab has got two points correct, and we have Fuad Nunsab with four points correct. So well done, guys. Uh, good competition. Um, from this round itself, from you all at home, let's have a look at the leaderboard and see the names that we have here. We have from Canada, we have uh, uh, Nishata Leakat, who's um, uh, scored seven. We have Tohid Adibayo, who has also scored seven. From the UK, we have Dania Richardson with seven. And we also have uh, uh, Mr. Rafiq for, with seven. And from Germany, we have, Med uh, I cannot see it from the screen, Philippe, uh, Medina Nasser with seven as well. So well done to our international group, which is participating through the app. Can you to do so? And let's see if uh, another country can overtake Canada in this next round. Remember, you can uh, send us your comments uh, through the social media handles. How have you found that so far? It's good. Um, I've got a feel for the buzzer now. So you're going to start think, to do martial yeah, arts yeah, yeah. now so that you can... Uh, just like relax a bit and... Relax a bit. Okay. All right. Excellent. So well done. Um, let's take you to the weekly challenge now. Uh, last week, we, we presented you with a challenge, Islamic calligraphy on the theme of mercy. We were overwhelmed by the responses from around the world and we extend our heartfelt gratitude for sharing your incredible entries. From all the submissions, we have selected just four entries that we are displaying on your screens to you now. Our viewers are now going to be able to select their favorite entry and vote for who will be getting today's weekly challenge winner prize. Simply select one, two, three, or four on your apps for which entry you want to give your vote to. The winner will receive a special package of MTA branded items. So from the studio here, let's get your opinion. Everyone's going to be voting at home. Yep. You have the four on your screens in front of you. Uh, the first um, is the Alaysa La one in front of you. What do, which one do you like? Um, as, a, as a whole picture, I think number two looks really nice. This it, one it, is one. the one in green. Is yep. that what you're saying? Yes. And what, what's attracted <coughs> you towards? I think um, just the, the whole makeup of it. I think it's, it's quite it's, attractive. It's yeah. giving you a bit more of a, a, an in-depth in yeah. <laughs> perspective of, yes. of, of, of the verse or the, of yeah. the word uh, quoted. And yourself, what would you like to? Well, I mean, they're, they're all very beautiful. Um, but if I had to choose one, it would be number four because I mean, it seems to be it's been drawn into a moon. <clears throat> the calligraphy has been done with the, with, the, with the moon being the background. So it's quite illuminating specifically, especially because of the month of Ramadan. OK, so um, yeah, point. if I had to choose, I'd choose number four. So let's have a look and see who you have voted at home. So at home, we have 27 percent have voted for Malik Sahib. 3% have voted for uh, S. Ahmed. 7% uh, have Jibreel Abdul Latif, which is number four. And the winner with 60% of the total votes, votes from our viewers all across the world is Sadia Makbul Sahiba. And uh, a very uh, big congratulations to uh, Sadia Makbul Sahiba, who has uh, submitted this beautiful calligraphy with the uh, artwork at the back. And you are the winner for this week's challenge. Do I get points? Now remember that um, the challenge continues, and for next week's challenge, next week's challenge, we want you to capture the spirit of Ramadan in a single photograph. For this, unleash your uh, creativity and show us your interpretation of this sacred month. Remember, we'll give preference to the ones who have not been edited. So remember, send your photographs about the sacred month of Ramadan a single photograph which captures as much meaning as possible and send that through to us by tagging us on social media and through our social media tags. And uh, select, uh, we will then select the four top submissions. And then again, next week, you'll be able to vote for your favorite photograph. If you haven't already downloaded the MTA app, please do so now. Simply scan the QR code on your screen with your phone and remember, if you're experiencing any issues, ensure that your app is updated for the smoothest experience. So Fahim Saab, um, how are you feeling now in the show? Good. I'm ready for this next round. I'm going to win it. Good. <laughs> <Looking forward to laughs> I understand. 
I understand you've had the chance to travel a lot throughout the world, spreading the message of the Promised Messiah, yes. salam. I've been uh, very lucky in that sense. Uh, I've been able to go to Argentina and Guatemala uh, in 2022 and 2023. Um, we went there. Uh, to Argentina was very special um, because we went to the southernmost city in the world, uh, a city called Ushuaia. We went there from Buenos Aires. Um, and we were able to deliver the Promise of Science message. So being able to do that was, was just, uh, it's indescribable how great it was. Oh, mashallah. And how did the people receive it? Oh, it was, it was just so nice for them, even though we didn't speak Spanish. So uh, on, the, on the way there, we, had, uh, uh, we were lucky enough to get a mulaqat with Huzur, and he guided us to um, take uh, a video of someone speaking in Spanish with the message, uh, and that to show that to people. And honestly, that was very well received. People were thinking, oh, you don't speak Spanish, but you've come all this way to spend this, uh, spread this message. So. I'm sure the people there must have felt the... Uh, uh, the passion that you had to come Definitely. all that way and to, and that, that enough sometimes is enough to actually uh, you know give that message across yeah and I, I, guidance there would have been pivotal for making it a success um, the MTA team also accompanied the Vakfiarzi group that went to Argentina let's have a look at a small preview of the pro program which is coming on MTA International soon Today is going to be the most important uh, event as it's the first time that a Muslim group has reached out to Ushuaia. It's true, you might be shy. It's a different country, different culture, different language. That's the jihad. That's exactly the jihad which Islam asked us to do. At the time of Holy Prophet, Muslim, the jihad was to go to the battles with your blood, with the sacrifice. Now it's a sacrifice of your ego. Jump into the cold water. Muslimanes por la paz. Musulman. Musulmanes por la paz. Musulmanes por la paz. Sorry, per. Eh, amor para todos. Ya. Yeah. Odio para nadie. First it, first it. Sound good. Tika? Yeah, tika. <laughs> We've just been seeing uh, Argentina. Um, to get a perspective and the geography of where we're talking about, uh, Buenos Aires from here is a good, what, 13, 14 hour flight? Yes. Then from there you went to Ushuaia, and how many hours is that? Yeah, um, it was about three hours. Um, and yeah, it was, so, it was so small, but it was, it was something that we just, it was incredible to see. And most people that are residing in such a remote place, what, what do they do there? So um, it was a like it literally was like one large strip of um, like a, a high street, so to speak, a very extended one where there was all the shops, uh, and it was very um, hilly and mountainous. Uh, and then we had a, an event on one of the hotels, uh, which uh, Marwan Saab had organised with a lot of local religious feed, um, faith leaders. But I'm sure you'll find out more in the documentary. <laughs> Inshallah. Um, so so stay tuned with MTA International for that very special documentary of this Vakfiarzi trip to Argentina. Let's go on to round two. <coughs> so in round two, we'll explore questions from the iconic book of the Promised Messiah, Alayhi Salam, Noah's Ark. Unlike round one, there are no buzzers here. Instead, both contestants will go head to head, aiming to answer each question and earn valuable points. But here's the catch. Each correct answer in this round is worth five points. This round may present a tougher challenge of memory. So each of the contestants will be given a virtual viewer's lifeline. With this lifeline, contestants can see what you, our viewers at home, have voted for and then make their choice accordingly. But remember, contestants, you only have one lifeline each. If you decide to use your lifeline, the other player's answers will be locked in, giving you the opportunity to select your answer based on the consensus of our viewers at home. It's, just, it's a strategic move that could make all the difference in this round. Ready for round two? Yes. Let's make a start. So, question one. Allah the Almighty has decreed to create a new heaven and new earth. What is meant by a new earth as mentioned by the promised Messiah alayhi salam? Is it A, signs of God Almighty? Is it B, a literal physical transformation of the planet earth? C, a new religion? Or D, pure hearts being prepared by God? Let's lock in your answers and see 
how you've answered here in the studio. Fawad Noon and Sab, how have you answered? I've answered D, pure hearts being prepared by God. Okay, Fahim awesome. Nasser Sab? The same, pure hearts being prepared by God. Okay, so both of you have gone for the same answer. Let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. Mashallah, both of you got that correct. And 69% of you at home also got the correct answer, which is pure hearts being prepared by God. A new earth means that those new hearts that God is preparing with his own hand, which will be manifested by him and through whom God will be manifested. Question two, let's move on. Which book of the Bible records the occurrence of a plague according to the time of the promised Messiah or during the time of the promised Messiah, salam? Is it A, Exodus, B, Psalms, C, Jeremiah, or D, Zechariah? Can I use my lifeline? Okay, so we have a request for a lifeline. Um, let's lock in the answer for Fawad Noonan Sahib. And let's uh, allow everyone at home to also respond. So everyone at home, please press your uh, answers and then let's try and guide Fahim Saab on his response. Let's have a look at the lifelines. So 34% of you have said, 35% have said Exodus, 35% have said Psalms, 12% have said Jeremiah, and 16% uh, and have said it's changing because it's because this is live. This is changing. So 17, 15% have said Zechariah. So let's have a look at the uh, locked in home answers. What's your answer going to be based on that? Um, is it there? Uh, I think Exodus. Exodus. So based on the guidance at home, um, Fahim Nasir Habsab has uh, said Exodus. Let's see the choice that um, Fawad Noonan Hassab says, has said. So Fawad Noonan Hassab ha has said uh, Zachariah. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, correct answer, please. Can you lock your answer in uh, for himself again? Yep. Perfect, excellent. So two different answers. Um, and the reveal for the right answer is... D, mashallah, that's very interesting. So the minority of people, only 15% went for Zachariah. Uh, mashallah, you got that right, um, uh, Noon Sub. 50% uh, had gone for Exodus, but unfortunately for him, Sub, they guided you in the wrong direction. So don't always trust the audience. I guess it goes to show the majority is not always right, you know? Yeah. Okay, right, yeah. good. <laughs> in the multiple books of the uh, Bible, the occurrence of the plague during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu has been mentioned, for example, in Zechariah 14.12 and the Gospel of Matthew 24.8. Right, question three. In which surah of the Holy Quran does it clearly indicate that the Messiah, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, and his mother traveled to Kashmir after the crucifix crucifixion? Is it A, Surah Rahman? Is it B, Surah Maryam? Is it C, Surah Al Mu'minun? Or D, Surah Al Baqarah? So let's have a look at uh, your answers. Uh, can we please lock in the answers so that everyone at home can actually also see? Right, so in the studio we have two different votes. We have Fahim Nasser Sab, what have you voted for? I've gone for B, Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam for yourself and <coughs> Nun Sab? I've chosen Surah Al Mu'minun. Surah Al Mu'minun uh, is your uh, answer. Let's see who's correct. I don't know. So the correct answer is Surah Al Mu'minun. Uh, again, Fawad, you've got that right. Um, 72% voted wrongly, actually, so voted for Surah, Mari Surah Maryam. So, um, well done getting that right. So, it's Surah Al Mu'minun. To learn more about this, let's go to Abdul Halim Sahib, again, one of our resident experts here at MTA International. All Ahmadi Muslims believe that Hazrat Isa wasalam, is buried in Kashmir, Sirinagar. But the rest of the world don't agree with us. The non-Ahmadis do not agree with us at all. But do you know that in the Holy Quran, God Almighty has stated that in fact, Hazrat Maryam wasalam, and Hazrat Isa wasalam, in fact traveled to Kashmir? Which basically means that we gave shelter to Hazrat Maryam and Hazrat Isa in an elevated land with springs of water. This is a perfect description of the land of Kashmir.
And it is a proven fact that in the history of Hazrat Isa after the crucifixion is the only time that he needed shelter. So it is no coincidence when a place in northern Pakistan in the region of Kashmir is also called Mari in honor of Hazrat Maryam. So for what's up? Um, we've seen that interesting VT about the uh, situation of Jesus and, and his crucifixion. You grew up in Ireland, which is a staunchly Catholic country. Yeah. How was it for yourself uh, being a Muslim, being brought up in that Catholic environment? How did you find it? I mean, I mean I'm half Irish. Um, my father is a convert to Islam. He was a Roman Catholic. And yeah, I grew up in the Republic of Ireland, which is predominantly uh, a Catholic Christian country. Um, so growing up, especially when I was quite young as a child, um, at that point, Ireland hadn't been as much uh, culturally integrated as it is today, or as multicultural. So you definitely, you definitely realize the, the difference between yourself and others. You know, because I went to a Catholic school, so you know, once a week you'd go to mass, and they would go and they'd, they'd um, have their holy communion and be confirmed and you know, go through their rituals. Um, I couldn't partake in that. I had to sit at the back um, and watch. But my father always like. Um, pushed me to go and learn, uh, even though I couldn't partake, obviously, because I'm a, a Muslim, an Ahmadi Muslim. So it was definitely um, a interesting experience growing up. Uh, and you had the chance to do Vakfi Arzi in Belfast? Is I did, right? yeah. Um, we, we went we on a uh, Tablig expedition uh, with Khudam and Madiya. And yeah, we, while we were there, we um, carried out Tablig stalls, we did leaflet, leafleting. And also um, Khudam and Madiya, in conjunction with Jamaat, we, uh, organized and um, uh, held a Vo Voices for Peace campaign in the Stormont, which is the parliament in Northern Ireland, uh, which I think um, many of the viewers might be aware as well. It's a campaign to call for a ceasefire in Palestine, but also to promote peace all around the world in um, areas which are stricken with violence, etc. So it was a very uh, fulfilling and enlightening experience. Um, right, let's go back to the quiz. Thank you for that. Um, remember that you should be helping our contestants here with the lifeline. Please lead them in the right direction. And uh, do take the risk as well of uh, asking your contestants at home to help you, okay? Let's go to the next question. Uh, question four. What is the second means of guidance in Islam <clears throat> as mentioned by the promised Messiah, alayhi salam? We have four possibilities. Is it a hadith? Is it the Holy Quran? Is it the, the Ruhani Khazain or is it the, the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Four possibilities. Let's uh, lock in your answers and everyone at home, please respond as well. Um, let's see how you have selected in the studio. So, Fahim Nasir Sab, how have you uh, chosen? Going for the Sunnah. You've gone for the Sunnah. And for Wad Noonan Sab? Likewise. The Sunnah. So let's have a look and see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is in fact Sunnah, well done. 57% of you at home also voted for the Sunnah. Um, the next group voted for Ahadith. The Sunnah is the second means of guidance in Islam. It is the actions of the Holy Prophet uh, for what he performed in terms of prayer and what he taught us and how it should be offered. When we compare that to the Ahadith, the Ahadith is more what he actually said. So the uh, Sunnah has been um, identified by the promised Messiah salam, of being of more importance. Let's go to the next question. How long does it take for the Holy Quran to purify a person if followed in letter and spirit as mentioned by the promised Messiah salam? Is it A, a week, B, a day, C, a month, or D, a year? Any lifeline requests? Could I get a lifeline, please? You can get a lifeline. Um, let's lock in the answer. So Fahim, Nas Fahim Nasab, you've locked in your answer, okay? And let's uh, go according to the poll at home. So the poll at home, everyone, please press your apps. Let's see how you're going to respond. Your answers have been locked and we can see that we can shorten or, it's okay. So we have now 31% have said a week, 44% have said a month, 17% a day, and 7% a year. So which is your preferred answer based on that? So what have you selected? I've gone with C, a month. You've gone for a month. Okay, let's reveal the correct answer. The correct answer is in fact, 
a week, mashallah. So, uh, well done, Nasisab. You've got that correct. Um, it is a week. Um, so, at home, please, you're meant to be guiding us in the right direction. Uh, please don't try and derail the process. This is helping these guys out. So, please press the right answers. I'm only joking. Try your best. Keep working hard. Press the right answers. Okay, question five. Okay, sorry, with regards to question five, the correct answer is in fact a week. Uh, so the key is being purified to the Holy Quran uh, in letter and spirit, as mentioned by the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, repeatedly throughout his writings. Let's go to question six. What was the only sign prophesied by Hazrat Isa, alayhi salam, that would be shown to his people? There are four possibilities. The sign of Jonah, which is A. The sign of Jacob, which is B. The sign of Elijah, which is C, and the sign of Jonah, which is D. I'm going to repeat that. So the sign of Joseph is A, Jacob is B, Elijah C, or Jonah D. Let's have a look at how you have uh, answered in the studio. So the studio. I went with D. You went with D, Jonah. which is Jonah. And then for WhatsApp? I went with D as well. D as well. Let's have a look at how you have done at home. So uh, the yeah. sign of Jonah is the selected um, answer, which is correct. Uh, at home, you 41%, unfortunately, at home have said uh, Elijah. So it's Jonah is the, uh, the right answer. Let's look at a little bit more about this from Kamar Zafra Sahib, who's also one of our experts here at MTA International. Did you know that the stories of Prophet Jonah alayhi salam and Prophet Jesus alayhi salam are slightly intertwined? But how? You see, when the people of Prophet Jesus alayhi salam asked him to show a sign to prove that he really is a prophet of God, he said that the people will be shown no sign except for the sign of Jonah. But what was the sign of Jonah? You see, it was around the time when the people of Nineveh, who were the people of Jonah, were sent a punishment by Allah himself that Jonah alayhi salam was also swallowed by a whale in the ocean. And he stayed in there for a few days. But the fact is that because Allah answered his prayers for forgiveness and repentance of his people, he survived that ordeal. And this was the sign of Jesus alayhi salam as well. He survived the crucifixion and he went into a tomb. But the fact is that just like Jonah alayhi salam, he also came out of it alive. And that is how we know that Prophet Jesus alayhi salam survived the crucifixion and came out of this ordeal very much alive. Right. Let's move straight on to question seven. Question seven is, how many matters of the unseen were revealed by Allah to the promised Messiah alayhi salam and subsequently came to pass at their appointed times? You have four possible answers. 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 or 20,000. Let's see how you have responded in the um, studio. Fahim Nasir Sab. I've gone with C, 10,000. 10,000 and uh, Fawad Sab? I've also gone with C, 10,000. So you've both gone for 10,000. Let's have a look and see what the uh, answer is. 10,000, mashallah. Um, 10,000 matters of the unseen were revealed uh, to the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. These signs have been mentioned in many different books of uh, the promised Messiah. Uh, let's have a look at the leaderboard. Um, the leaderboard shows us that in the studio we have 27 points with Fahim Nus uh, Nasir Sab and Fawad Noonan Sab, we have 30 points. So it's very close, mashallah, well done guys. Uh, let's have a look at this round at home. How have you scored around the world through the MTA app? We have the UK leading now. Where's Canada gone? Um, let's have a look. Dania Sahiba and Dania Richardson, you have 38. We have Madiha Sahiba with 37. We have an African presence, mashallah. We have 36 from Ghana, Abdul Rauf Sahib. 36 uh, from uh, Suraya and Zoya uh, at, uh, in London, in UK as well. And Sabiha Saif, you have 33. So let's uh, have some more activity from North America again. And let's try and see how many more continents we can get involved in uh, getting to the top of this uh, leaderboard. The leaderboard stands uh, as you have shown and uh, the numbers may change, but remember that it's a matter of being as fast as you can on your buzzers because it's all a matter of speed. So many of you may be answering correctly, but it's all a matter of getting to the buzzer in time. After last week's episode, it looks like many of you or our viewers have started reading Noah's Ark and have climbed high in your scores. So continue with this process, especially in this holy month of Ramadan. 
We still have one more round, so if you want to take part in this live and truly interact in this quiz, scan the QR code, which is on your screens, download the official MTA app, and go over to quiz time. Just a reminder that if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be significantly delayed compared to those watching via the official app. So for the best experience, please watch via the official MTA app for the best chance to win. Now, we only have just about halfway left for the quiz. Uh, uh, both contestants have been displaying excellent, excellent sportsmanship, I must say, and they're fasting at the same time. There is more to come as we find out which contestant here and which contestant at home will take away today's win. Before we proceed with the next round, let's take a moment to ponder over the significance of this blessed month. Ramadan is a time for self-reflection and spiritual growth, and today marks 135 years since that historic day on the 23rd of March, 1889, when 40 noble souls embraced Islam Ahmadiyyat at the hands of the promised Messiah, the Imam Mahdi, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian. Earlier, our team had the privilege of speaking in, with an individual who embraced Islam Ahmadiyyat just five years ago, and since then has devoted his life to serving and spreading its very message. We convert when we find Islam. It's like we want to know more and more and more and still more and more and more and more. We want is Islam. It's like we need Islam. When I was looking information about Islam, I have no one in my town, in my city, that can give me help, information, guidance. I want to be that key for open the door of the religion to those truthful helps. <laughs> Meet Thomas Anas, a 20-year-old who accepted Ahmadiyyat five years ago and has dedicated his life to spread the message of Ahmadiyyat. I come from a Catholic family. I used to go to Catholic school and uh, Catholic church too. And uh, I loved uh, religion in that, in that moment. But I used to have a few questions, like for example, about what is in reality Jesus? If Is he in reality the son of God? God is not in reality God if he has a son. And uh, I started like, growing more questions, for example, about uh, the creation. Uh, in my mind that uh, ev everything have a logic and not like uh, they teach me in Catholic Church. His mother passed away when he was a mere 10 years old. After a time, my mother passed away. So I started prostrating my room during nights, like uh, wanting to get uh, closer to God. Despite the death of his beloved mother, Anas' passion for seeking God continued to grow. He began to try and reach out to him which led him to find out more about Islam. I met uh, Muslims by WhatsApp groups. They adopted the thinking of what are Muslims? What do they believe? I have no idea. So I went to buy a Quran in a library. It was for me like a miracle to find Islam. Then I started looking by social media, by Instagram, and I found the Jamaat Ahmadiyya. Once discovering the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, both intrigued and eager for the truth, he kept visiting Ahmadi Muslims every day, each time gaining more and more knowledge about the true Islam. I met Muslims and started looking for information about Muslims. It's like every question that I used to have when I was a kid, it was answered. In his pursuit for the truth, Anas was even sent signs from Allah through a dream, seen not by him, but his friend. In that uh, she had a dream, uh, in that uh, she was uh, lost in the street and there were, there were no one there and uh, she found me just uh, walking and uh, she asked me where should she go and uh, I said to, to her ah Ahmadiyya and uh, she just wake up and uh, sent me a message like telling me that dream. His meeting with Hazrat Khalif al Masih V was impactful with Hazur showering Anas with love, kindness and compassion. Oh, I, I can only describe that feeling with blessings. Yeah, like It was so emotional. That, uh, during the meeting, Hazur was so friendly, so open, like a friend from the, from the entire life. He also made his signature in my Quran and gave me a few pens and uh, this, this ring too. He told me that in Jamia Ghana, what happens that maybe I will miss my family that I will miss my country, I will miss my home. And uh, Huzu said that 
I should not leave my home because now I am a soldier for the cause of Islam. That was everything I needed to hear from him. It made me uh, realize what I am now, that I am a soldier of Islam. I, I, I am that person that I want to be for helping other persons. <laughs> Welcome back to the quiz time here at the studios. And you were just watching the moving story of Thomas Anas, who has not only decided to become an Ahmadi Muslim, but also decided to dedicate his life to spread the message of Islam, Ahmadiyyat, as a soldier of the Jamaat, spreading the word of the promised Messiah and the Holy Prophet وسلم, to every corner of his own country, Argentina, and inshallah, the, country, the, the world at large. Now shifting uh, back to our focus on the quiz, and we'll go on to our final round, round three. The buzzers are back and we are sticking to the same format as in round one. This is about the Khalifa's voice. Uh, the questions here are related to the sermons delivered by Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ayyidahullah Ta'ala bin Nasrahil Aziz. To buzz in, you must do so and you have 10 seconds to lock in your response. In this round, like I mentioned, it's all about the recent Friday sermons delivered by our beloved Iman. Uh, because it's the Promised Messiah Day, we will try and focus as many questions about Yom Messiah Maud. Each correct answer will earn two points. So if you're trailing behind, now's your opportunity to make a comeback. Let's get started. So, question one. In yesterday's sermon, how many parts of the Holy Quran did Hazur Ayyidahullah Ta'ala bin Nasrahil Aziz advise us to recite every day during the month of Ramadan? We have four different possibilities. Two parts, one part, three parts, or four parts. Uh, let's lock in your answer. And your time is up. What's your answer? One part. For one part, uh, Fahim Nasir Sab. Let's see uh, what C and D was, because it doesn't seem to have appeared on those screens. C was three parts and D was four parts. Let's have a look and see who was correct. You were in fact correct, along with 82% of our audience um, who also selected one part. Um, Hazur advised to recite at least one part of the Holy Quran every day in this way, so that in this way one can complete a full recitation of the Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan. Let's go to question two. Carry on. What was the primary reason for the success of the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as mentioned by Hazuri Akdas, Aidahullah Ta'ala bin Nasrahil Aziz? You have four options. A, their wealth and resources. B, their dedication to charity. C, complete devotion to the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And D hasn't come up yet because you've pressed the buzzer. We'll show that and reveal that later. But uh, your time is about to end. What is your answer, please? It's uh, C, complete devotion to the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet. So Fawad Sab has gone for C, which is a complete devotion to the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And um, can you press it on your iPad again, just so it can show up? And um, D, the possibility was their willingness to engage in battle. Okay, 91% of you at home also managed to get uh, the answer correct, which was the complete uh, devotion uh, to the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet, peace be Salawat. upon him. So, correct answer is that as shown. Let's go on to the next question. What revelation did the promised Messiah alayhi salam receive from Allah the Almighty regarding the purpose of establishing the Jamaat as mentioned by Hazur Akdas in his sermon? Was it A, promote disputes between Shias and Sunnis? B, unite all Muslims on earth under one religion? So the buzzer has been pressed a little earlier than uh, all the answers could be shown to you. Uh, we have only three seconds remaining. Let us find out what your answer is. Fahim Nasir Sab. Unite all Muslims. B. So you have uh, answered, unite all Muslims on earth under one religion. Um, let's see if you are correct. Great, well done, mashallah, you've got that correct. 
Uh, option C was establish a community based on differences between sects and groups. And D was to unite Christians and Buddhists. The vast majority of you, mashallah, 93% of you got the right answer. Um, the correct answer, as uh, you've seen, was to unite all Muslims under one religion on earth. Let's go to the next question. What is the key factor that will unite all Muslims into one Ummah? As mentioned by Hazur Ayyadahullah Ta'ala. Is it A, advocating for one sect over others? Is it B, political dominance over other nations? Is it C, establishment of Khilafat on the precepts of prophethood? So we're going to hold the answer without revealing the third, uh, sorry, the final one. Uh, Fawad Noonan Saab, you have uh, pressed the buzzer within that time. Let us uh, hear what your answer is. It's uh, C, establishment of Khilafat on the precepts of... Establishment of Khilafat on the precepts of prophethood. Let's see what option D was, in fact. It was promoting peace and harmony. Let's see if you're correct. Mashallah, well done, Fawad Noonan Sab, you've got that correct. And 87% of you also got that correct. Uh, uh, the uh, precepts of prophethood is the correct answer. And, and Khilafat is the only way that the whole Ummah can progress further and remain united. Right, final question of the show is, according to the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, what qualities must one instill within themselves to be considered a true believer or Muslim? Is it A, the qualities of courage and strength? Is it B, the, the qualities of mercy and compassion? Is it C, the qualities of knowledge and wisdom? And is it, or is it D, the qualities of the Khulafai Rashidin? We've had a buzz in in the studio. Uh, Fahim Nasir you have selected an answer. You've got only three seconds left to change your mind if you would like to. What's your answer? D. And D is your answer, the qualities of Khulafai Rashidin. Let's see what the right answer is. And mashallah, you've got that right. 67% of you have uh, also got that right. So well done to you at home. You've got that right. The correct answer is rightly Khalifai Rashidin. And it's important to emulate the excellent character and complete devotion to the will of God, um, uh, which they showed uh, under the guidance of their beloved master, our beloved master, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So that's all the questions for today's Ramadan special quiz time. Let's check out the final scores and see who has won in the studio. Oh. So, <laughs> extremely close. We have Fahim Nasir Saab with 33 points and we have Fawad Noonan Saab uh, with 34 points. Mashallah, well done uh, both of you. It was very, very close and it was a good comeback uh, from the yeah. beginning. So, really good. Um, how's that making you feel? Um, I feel good. I feel good, but I uh, had a worthy adversary. So. Do you think the support at home was actually helping you? Um, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> let's, have, let's see how they respond when you get home now. Okay, so leaderboard from home. Let's see how you all responded at home. And we have with us now, uh, the top scorer was Dania Richardson with 48 points. Well done there. Abdul Rao from Ghana, well done there. You've got 46 points. We have Suraya and Zoya with 46 points as well. Well done to both of you. Madiha with 45 points and 43 points with Sabiha Saif. So uh, well done to all of you at home. Remember, this is all about pressing the buzzer in the right time and obviously pressing the right answer. Uh, so congratulations to both of you once again and a heartfelt jazakumullah to all our viewers participating throughout the world. Don't forget to spread the word and invite your friends and family to join us for the next show. And we'll be with you here every Saturday throughout Ramadan. Make sure you submit your entries for the weekly challenge as well and stay connected with us on our social media channels for our updates on what's coming up in the next few weeks. We hope you enjoyed this enriching experience where you, alongside our contestants here in the studio, join us from different corners of the globe to compete and enhance your knowledge. We bid farewell to you and with the note that we please ask you to follow Hazul's guidance for prayers in this blessed month. And let's prioritize the study of the Holy Quran as he really did emphasize in his Friday sermon yesterday. As our beloved Imam prays for us, we should re reciprocate the same and remember him in all our nawafil and in all our sujood. From all of us here in the studios in London, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. <laughs>